The Z06 was a code for a track-oriented performance option on the 1963 Corvette. The only way you would even know to order it was through people whispering in people's ears, if you want to go racing, right in the box, you want Z06 option and you'll get all the specialty hardware. It wasn't until the fifth generation that we brought it back and it's become a brand unto itself. You want it to go faster, stop faster, turn faster. Basically, it's the most track-oriented Corvette that we do. Through the fifth, sixth, seventh, and now eighth generation car, we've moved the street car and the racer closer and closer together. The development both on the vehicle side and the engine side are tied together at the hip. It's a way to put the best of Corvette together and expand the performance bandwidth. The mid-engine architecture in the eighth generation Corvette allows us to do that even more. In my quest for performance, a Z06 was the car, which is basically a race car for the street and will perform with the best of the best worldwide. It's the first time that I had experienced a Corvette on the road that actually rode and felt like a race car. That precision, to me, that was everything. This is the one that elevates the Corvette brand. Saying that it felt like a supercar doesn't do it justice. <laughs> this thing rips. This keeps you locked in. I know we're having a conversation right now, but I'm still focused here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still focused here. The other people that we're competing against that are in a price range that is unique to themselves are going to look back at this as the one that changes how they operate. The heart of the Z06 is the engine. We had mid-engine architecture, which was a big step forward, but we also needed that power. There was a niche following that really pined for the immediate response, the lightweight, visceral feel of a naturally aspirated engine that would exceed the horsepower of the prior generation supercharged Z06. What kind of powertrain would we need to do that? The only way to achieve that is to do the highest horsepower, naturally aspirated V8 that's ever done in automotive history. That's what had to happen. Oh, this is the mag ride, too. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> Wait, can I start it? An engine of this nature is truly playing in the exotic space. We had our hands really untied to buy the best aluminum forged pistons, titanium connecting rods, to go to the true mechanical valve train. It is a low volume, hand-built precision engine. The big advantages of moving to a flat plane crank is the mass in the engine that's moving the fastest is much lighter. And in doing that allows the engine to accelerate in speed much more rapidly 
than any small block before it and also achieved more than 650 horsepower, making it the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 engine in a production car. We only do a mid-engine car once. We really looked at um, how, to, how to get the engine that we really all wanted to have, which was um, a flat plane crank V8. That was what we really wanted to do. Step on it, step on it. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, it rubs so hard! <laughs> this is crazy! Oh my God, it's still going! <laughs> Having a, a C8 steering myself, Z51 package, just to see the RPM go to eight and a half K, I think it's actually 8,600. Yep. This is nuts. Most of us are used to shifting a V8, you know, 65, 6,600 at the, at the highest. The LT6 will rev to 8,600 RPM. From 7,000 to almost 9,000 was a whole different range that not many people get to experience. And it makes power the whole way up. So even when you're up in those higher RPM ranges, you could tell when we stepped into the gas more, you could still feel it pulling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's just instant. And the thing keeps pulling and pulling, and, and it's all the way to the, the red line, all the way to the red line. Each time you just feel the, the power building and building and building. Uh, to me, it's, it's what it's all about. That speed enables the engine to pump more air, process more fuel, and produce more power. But another part of it is generations of learning how to balance the requirements to make a car fast and comfortable on the track, and also comfortable as an everyday driver. The manufacturing tolerances in this engine are race car tight, and that requires a skilled operator and custom shims to make the resulting engine essentially fit net, uh, no gaps anywhere. This engine runs to 8,600 RPM. That's by far the quickest spinning engine we've ever done. And the only way you do that is to have extremely precise manufacturing.